So I get quite a few questions down in the comments section asking the status of various projects that we have going on at the channel. Um, we got quite a few different projects that are in various states of completion. Uh, some of them you haven't seen in quite a while, some of them you see a little bit more than others. So I figured today, um, since we're driving the ugly truck to work, I'd answer that and give you guys kind of like the status update of all the projects that I am currently involved in on my channel because it's like well what about this truck when are you going to get back on that truck whatever happened to this truck are you ever going to finish the mustang uh, so today we're going to answer that but since we're in the ugly truck driving to work right now i figured i'd start with this one um, ugly truck is the truck that started my channel it's my extended cab big block turbocharged e85 burning fun toy i get it out and drive it every now and then but we're actually going to fix today um, a problem with it, or I'm going to try to fix it, a problem that's been going on for probably a year. It actually has a crock, um, crock, not a crock, it has a crack in one of the cylinder heads and it has a coolant leak. Now thankfully it's a, a slow leak and I can actually drive the truck for probably three or four days um, and it doesn't really lose maybe more than a half a quart of coolant so not a huge deal but I'm just tired of it leaking um, and there is one track event I'm thinking about trying to make uh, in a week or two. So I figured what the heck, let's try to get that leak patched up. So we're gonna head to the shop and that's the very first thing that we do. Um, and after we're successful, I'll give you guys the status update on all the rest of the projects that we have in our arsenal. So now that we got everything nice and toasty warm underneath the hood, of course, we're gonna immediately jump in and start working on it. Um, the problem area is down here, right on the side of the cylinder head above the exhaust manifold. I can't really even show you right now, uh, but in order to access it, all of the nice, really warm turbo parts are gonna have to come off. So let's jump right in and burn our fingers off. I still technically am bedding these uh, these brakes in the big claw from Bear, so I probably shouldn't drive so enthusiastically, but I mean, come on, let's get a turbo. You know, it's funny, I had a comment on a video recently, and a person used the old analogy of like, when the only tool you own is a hammer, every problem is a nail. You know, you probably heard of that one before. Uh, and then they typed in parentheses, a welder. Um, but you know what, it's, yeah, I, I do use a welder a lot. I'm proud of it. Um, because if we didn't have a TIG welder, we couldn't build stuff like this. I mean, so yeah, we use it a lot. This is an awful lot of work to do, just on the hopes that I can fix this crack. I think I can, pretty positive, but I never really know. I got everything loose except for the bottom two. Um, so if you could kind of go down there and get those two bottom turbo bolts out. It's a little warm, so I will hold it up here. So the crack that we are trying to gain access to is kind of right here. So now uh, plug wires and the exhaust manifold need to come off and then we should be able to actually properly assess it at that point.
Fun fact, these S400 turbochargers weigh about 50 pounds and normally all that holds them up is just this flange right here. That's a lot of weight. So uh, I designed this beefy quarter inch uh, plate both to the front of the cylinder head and this provides a rock solid point to mount this from. And this is all like heavy weld to super thick. And the reason why I know how much an S400 weighs is because I was just online looking at new turbos and that's what they advertise the shipping weight as. Access is a little tough, but I have the crack identified. I drilled a pilot hole just a little bit on either end of it to hopefully kind of stop it from going further. Um, it's about an inch and a half long in total, so I'm just going to try to V it out a little bit with this guy and give us a little bit of area to fill. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned it already or not, but this is 100% my fault. Um, the reason why this is cracked right now is because last summer when I had this engine out, there was a couple of broken off exhaust studs right here and here, and I had to use a ton of heat to get those guys out, which I did. I successfully got them out, but caused a crack in the process. So um, I guess maybe not as successful as I originally thought. The process that I'm going to be using is, well, it looks like this. This is TIG brazing. So you've seen me use the TIG welder a lot and mainly the difference between TIG welding and TIG brazing, when you weld, you're liquefying the base material with heat and then you're adding filler in, which also liquefies and the two kind of combine into one uniform metal. When you're brazing, you're heating up the base metal, but you're not liquefying it. You're only liquefying the filler and it kind of flows like hot glue. That's probably the best way um, I could describe it. And this is sort of what it looks like. Um, and it has this gold color because I'm using um, aluminum bronze filler metal, which according to my quick Google search is the ideal material to attempt this repair. The crack, it starts, I'll zoom in a little bit. Crack starts way up here and it goes all the way down to about right here. Uh, and oh, fun fact, by the way, a dash six AN plug happens to be the same exact size as a 5.8 spark plug. Um, so you can put that in just to stop any dust or whatever from getting inside your engine. But um, yes, that is the crack right there. So wish me luck because this could go really good or really bad. All right, guys, this is probably one of the most frustrating repairs that I have attempted in a long time, partially because it's kind of outside of my normal skill set. Like I mentioned earlier, um, I've never really attempted TIG brazing and I've never really attempted working with cast iron, which I know is a very tricky material and I'm probably not doing it right. Technically, the head probably should come off and we should put it in an oven and preheat it to do this, quote unquote, the right way. But uh, here's kind of what I'm experiencing. Uh, we're just chasing cracks at this point. And I'll zoom in a little bit, try to hold the camera steady and show you. But um, if you remember, we started out with just a single crack kind of going from about here to here, right down in the middle. But now the area of brazing is all the way around here. And basically, uh, once I got this sort of patched up, I'd find a little bit of a crack that would start to form out this way. And I'd kind of get that one patched up. And then um, there'd be a crack go along the edge down here. There's a crack down here. 
Um, basically, just as we add heat and as we try to flow that filler material in there, we just have more and more cracks that are starting to propagate. Um, my initial goal at the beginning of the day was just to seal up the cooling system so we don't have any leaks. Um, I do not have, apparently, the skill set or the patience, after six hours on it, to try to do this the right way. And my fear is that if I continue on, the repair area is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and I don't know if ultimately I will be able to seal up all the cracks. So I'm giving up. Like I said, I, um, I hate even saying that. I hate admitting it because I'm stubborn. I spent a ton of time on this, um, and I thought I could get it. But uh, it happens. So what do we do from here? That's the million dollar question. Because remember, my first goal, get this thing patched up so it doesn't leak. Um, I did start looking at a few different options, like you can get remanufactured cylinder heads. Um, so I thought, well, I could pull one off and just replace it, which would be a good option. But I hate spending money and time for lateral moves to be back in the same place that we are now. Now, if you recall, I'm trying to chase a nine second quarter mile goal with this thing. And I know I'm going to have to do more work to the engine at some point. So if I'm pulling the head off, short version is I want to put something better back on, like the PSI ported 8.8 .8 heads that Hank Slocum offers. Uh, we put a set on a truck earlier this spring, and they're a really great option. So that's probably what I would want to do if I ended up pulling heads off. But I'm not quite ready to dive into this project again right now because um, I've got a bunch of other stuff on my plate. I still wanted to get the drag truck fired up this year. And yesterday I even thought like, well, shoot, why don't I go down and get that motor, the 535 big block and put it in here instead of this one. But um, that's not really the direction I wanted to go. Um, I want to get the S10 done, so I don't really want to dive into this just yet. So I'm ashamed to admit this, but I'm going to try something which it, it, it might work and I think it'll be okay. But we're going to try some JB Weld. Um, this is a decent product. And uh, the only reason I was a little bit hesitant, because um, if this were on a different spot of the head, it would work just fine. Um, I was just a little bit nervous because it is in the proximity of some very hot stuff. Um, the surface of the cylinder head is probably only going to be 200, 250 degrees. Um, coolant temp is, you know, right around 200. But of course, you've got the other stuff around it. And JB Weld is good to 550 degrees. So, like I said, this is a temporary solution. Um, ultimately, we will tear this motor apart and do it right. But at least for now, if this can get me, you know, a couple more months or maybe even a year of occasional driving on this thing before I yank it back apart, then so be it. Let's give it a shot and cross our fingers. All right, it's Friday morning now. We have the repair at a state that I'm gonna call intermediate success. Um, still not proud of the fact that I actually use JB Weld. I really wish I could have got the TIG brazing method to actually work. That would have been probably more on the permanent repair where I'm still considering the JB Weld sort of a temporary thing that'll get me through a little, little bit more fun driving because long-term I am gonna replace the heads with something a little bit bigger and better. I just don't wanna to commit to that right now because as you can maybe see, sitting outside, boom, S10. I'm really, I'm really anxious to get started on that part, uh, the LS swap for that. So don't wanna open up another can of worms right now. But anyhow, that's what the repair looks like right now. Yeah, definitely not the prettiest thing, but I am calling it intermediate success because uh, we have the coolant pressure tester on there right now. It is holding a rock steady, 16 pounds, so um, I know it's not gonna leak right now, but the heat is kind of the only variable. Will over time, the exhaust manifold being next to that well, or the JB weld repair, will it cause it to fail? I, I don't know, but remember, temporary repair, long-term solution is different heads, different intake manifold, bigger turbo, probably bigger cam, and a lot more fun. We just don't wanna get into that right now. So anyhow, um, we're going to let that sit on there just for a little bit longer under pressure just to 100% verify that we have no leaks 
and then we'll slap this thing back together and go for test drive. Gonna pray to the turbo gods that this is gonna work. You guys wouldn't believe how many times I like start to do something, forget to hit record, and then have to take the thing back off and do it again. Not fun. So I've got the ugly truck put back together pretty much, and I think this repair was successful. I still am a little bit bummed out that I had to use JB Weld and that I couldn't make the TIG brazing work out how I envisioned, but I think it's gonna be a good temporary repair. Remember, long-term, we're gonna change a bunch of stuff. Uh, but I got the truck started up, I warmed it up, put it through a little bit of a heat cycle here on the lift, um, and it doesn't really look the best, but so far it's holding up. I took my little laser thermometer and right here that spot gets to be somewhere around like 200 to 210 degrees, which is well within the window that JB Weld is rated for. It goes up to 550 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so fingers crossed, again, a temporary, but I think we are in the clear. Now, part of this video was kind of supposed to be answering your questions about the status of all the different projects that we have going on. And I think we've talked enough about the ugly truck so far. You guys kind of know what my vision is. I want to do a nine second quarter mile pass um, and keep it kind of just a fun street truck. But we still got a bunch of other projects that I need to tell you about. So while I get the inner fender liner in, get the tire back on and then actually take it out on test drive, I'll tell you guys about some more of the trucks. Now this next project is one that I am probably the most excited about, the most invested into, and the, the most pumped because it's also going to be the fastest truck that I own eventually. Um, my goal for this one is to run 850s in the quarter mile. It's gonna be about 1700 horsepower. I am of course talking about not the tracker. Uh, we're talking about the four wheel drive drag truck, which originally started out as an extension of the ugly truck project um because i needed another motor for that truck or so i thought uh, but then it quickly snowballed because i decided to convert the ugly truck to four wheel drive but then i said hey you know what we've got so many parts why not just build a complete separate truck so this spring we found the sheet metal for it and as you can tell by my surroundings right now it is currently sitting in a storage locker just waiting for its turn um, we have done a lot of this truck over the last as much as i hate to say it probably two years uh, but we started out with a chassis, so it's got a 14-bolt um, semi-floater out back, Calvert split monoliths, Funkhauser sliders. We have an anti-roll bar out back uh, with some really nice Viking shocks, uh, true track in the rear end. And then out front, we did a lot of work on the suspension as well. We started out with an off-the-shelf tubular control arm kit, which I heavily modified. And then I built my own uh, custom spring mounts. We get some Viking Crusaders on there, pretty good shock. Um, and then here it sits, basically ready for the next step. Uh, like I said, chassis is pretty much done, but we still have a bunch of wiring, uh, you know, fabricate a roll cage, build the turbo kit, build, um, you know, the intercoolers, get all the other supporting systems. Because right now, basically, we just have a rolling chassis with a shell plopped on top. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I'm the most excited about this one. My goal, mid eights in the quarter mile sort of almost full weight too. And I know you guys give me a hard time about that, but I just want to be able to have a lot of the creature comforts in here. Like we'll probably lose the heavy seats, but I still want some semblance of a dash. I want this to look like a truck. So um, it's probably going to be heavy, but it's also going to be fast and fun. Uh, 
535 cubic inches is hard to go wrong. But that's pretty much the status update of the four wheel drive drag truck. And I do hope to get it fired up by the end of this year, at least to hear the motor run. Now this next project that you guys ask about has the distinction of being the most fun to build and to compete with, hands down. And I'm talking of course about the Copo truck. Now it is also a 2000 Chevy Silverado, except this one's a single cab short box step side. And I called it the Copo truck because I built it as if the Copo program still existed, where you could basically mix and match any GM part from the parts bin and build kind of your own custom creation. So we started out with a 4.8 Silverado. We completely tore the engine out. We tore it down. We gapped the rings. We resealed it. We put in a better valve train, bigger camshaft, and basically prepared it to hold up to a lot of power, which was, of course, delivered courtesy of the LSA supercharger. Now, the truck made about 550 horsepower at the wheels. <laughs> screamed all the way to 7,000 RPM. But what made it the most fun and kind of unique was its full-time all-wheel drive system that we pulled from a Yukon Denali. Uh, that truck, it was an absolute blast. Like it didn't matter if the roads were dusty or icy or snowy or dry. <laughs> Like you could just hammer down on the throttle. It had instant power delivery. And thanks to the 430 gears and all wheel drive, it would just scoot off the line. Uh, we actually took it to LS Fest West, I believe in 2022. And I forget if it was first or second place, but we did really well in the truck grand champion class. And it was just like, it was so much fun because I would line up against like Corvettes and Camaros and other vehicles like in the Speed Stop Challenge especially, and the truck would just dominate off the line. And of course, when it came to cornering, it didn't do so well, but um, the Copo truck, yes, it was an absolute blast. But unfortunately, like you often do, we sold the Copo truck. I think it was the fall, the fall of 2022, we had to let it go. And it was in part what helped us get into the shop here. So I wish I could keep every project, but unfortunately that's just not in the cards because you end up tying so much money up into these things. And if you don't have any utility for it in terms of either content or driving it, you know, it made sense. And of course, I think it was worth it in the long run. Uh, but I will say this though, the Copo truck did inspire this next project, uh, which is going to be bigger and better in just about every single way. So I am very excited to get the S10 done because with the V8 power, the all-wheel drive and the light weight, I think it's going to be an absolute blast. So that's kind of like the very next thing that we have to do on the channel is get that LS swap started. Uh, but there is one more project you guys do ask about quite a bit, and that's of course my new Edge Mustang. I think it was an 03, uh, and I actually bought it right after I sold the Copo truck, right before we moved from Utah to Colorado to do the shop thing. Now. The plan for the Mustang, I had bought a 5.4 dual overhead cam motor uh, from a Lincoln Navigator. I found one of those cool Australian Boss 290 intake manifolds for it. I just wanted to build a cool mod motor Mustang, you know, turbocharged, I think, 1,000 horsepower drag slash street car. Uh, that, was, that was kind of the plan, but um, I drove it from Utah to Colorado. I drove it around here a little bit when I got here, but it just, as we were getting the shop up and running, I just decided, you know what? Let's sell that car and let's figure out another project, which I think the S10 is kind of like the replacement for the Mustang. And I'd love to do another Mustang again at some point, maybe a Coyote powered one. Um, we'll see how that goes. But uh, yep, the Mustang unfortunately is no longer in the fleet. Now, looking forward, uh, there, is, uh, there are a few things that I have on my radar. For the most part, you see me building lowered street trucks, whether they're two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, or big block or small block, they're all kind of in the same realm. And I really want to branch out. So one of the next projects, I have two that I'm deciding on, which this will be many, many months down the road, but I'm either going to build some sort of a long travel, high powered off-road jumpy truck, as I like to call them, uh, something like, a, a Nissan Hardbody, which was my first truck, with an LS, solid axle, long travel, coilovers, just a, 
you know, turbocharged, just like a really cool, radical, lightweight off-roader, or I want to build something that's small like a car, whether it's a, a Mustang or a Camaro or a Corvette or, you know, maybe I'd even thought about doing some European stuff like, uh, which I know is kind of outside of what you guys normally expect to see, but like a C63 uh, AMG I'd love to do, or even like a, um, what's the, not an E60, that's a 5 Series, but like a E, E90, an E90 Series Beamer with maybe an LS swap. I, so anyway, my, my brain goes all over the place, but that's just one of the things that I am thinking about doing in the future, because like I said, we still have to get through the current roster of projects. I want to get the four-wheel drive drag truck fired up and on the road. I want to get the S10 LS swapped and kind of daily driving it again. Um, so we got a lot to do. And there's only so many hours in every day, but that's sort of the update on most of the projects that you have seen or asked about on my channel. So thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. Um, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you'd like to see. If there's any crazy ideas, I mean, I'm honestly, you know me as a truck guy and I'm at my core. That's kind of what I am, but I have an interest in all kinds of different stuff and who knows what the future will bring. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Come back soon. And lastly, I know it's kind of impossible to see here in the home garage, but I wanted to give a final update on the cooling system uh, patch job that we did on the ugly truck. Um, it has been probably, I don't know, 50, 60 miles that I've driven it. And so far, everything is holding up A-OK. -okay. We've done a couple of uh, spirited acceleration runs. We've... Um, you know, we've kind of flogged it for 50 miles, but so far so good. Nothing has leaked out. So uh, fingers crossed that this is a sort of long-term temporary repair.